Welcome. Today we'll take a look at refactoring within LaTeX. And the refactoring that we'll focus on is architectural refactoring. And we'll take a look at a few examples and show you how, uh, how you can take a large scale application. Perhaps you, it's become very difficult to maintain. Perhaps you, you want to split it up. Perhaps you want to share code. Uh, what, how do you go about doing something like that? So let's start with a simple example, first of all. Um, I have a project that's loaded, and it's, um, it's a C and C++ code base. And it's, got, it's called ISO AG lib. It's a microkernel. And it's got a set of uh, directories, which then contain some source files and header files and so on. And we have a map of all the dependencies uh, that, that we have, that we have created uh, by doing an analysis of it. And so let me, first of all, you can see that there are lots of dependencies between them. Um, and I'm going to first apply partitioning in order to get an architectural sense of it. So I'm going to go ahead and apply component partitioner, uh, which ordered it according to the way it should be layered. Uh, and we can also see that all of them are right now coupled to each other. So for instance, com depends on util. And we can also see that util depends on com and there is a cycle there. Until LaTeX came along, people would dump, would print out the cycles that exist within your various files or within various subsystems. And this in itself would represent hundreds of different cycles that exist. So where should you snip your cycle? Where should you cut it so that you get rid of the cycle? And the answer right here seems pretty clear. If I wanted to get rid of the cycle between com and util, I would get rid of that one dependency there. I could have the other alternative being I would have to get rid of 301 dependencies the other way. And as an architect, I recognize that com is where my application level code goes. And it's going to depend on the utilities. And therefore, it makes sense for me to eliminate that dependency. And let me simulate that. Let me just hide the dependencies, uh, that, that particular dependency. Uh, and now I have removed that dependency from my model. And I can apply partitioning again. And once I apply partitioning again, you'll see that it still selected all of them. And why did it do so? Because we noticed that com depends on util. And now util doesn't depend on com anymore. But util does depend on the hardware abstraction layer, uh, which in turn depends on my driver. And then the driver in turn depends on com. So here is a cycle which has got four different legs to it. And you can have these giant cycles. So where should you split it? Once again, the answer suggests pretty clearly that the driver shouldn't have any dependencies on com. And I can get rid of that de dependency, and I'll hide it. And there, I've removed that dependency. And now if I apply partitioning and apply my component partitioner, notice that I have now uh, decoupled my com, my the rest of my system from com. So in other words, com, which is the application layer, uses the rest of the code which is underneath it, but the dependencies are removed from the other way. And if we go to the work list, uh, we can see that we have a full list of what are the dependencies that we eliminate. So just to summarize, unless you have an architectural sense, uh, you wouldn't know which dependency to, to remove. And with LaTeX, you can directly focus in on the right set of dependencies that, uh, that, that are caused, that are the, the bad dependencies or the ones that are causing the cycles, uh, and you can fix those. Moving on, let's take a look at um, another example. Let's just stick to, for instance, util. And let's say that we wanted to, there are some utilities that are very useful, and we wanted to share it with another application. Well, if we wanted to do that, what would we do? We would turn util into its own library, perhaps a shared library or a static library, which is then linked into ISO AG lib, but then is also linked into some other program. If we try to do it now, notice that util depends on star. And therefore, the files inside star would have to come with util. Turns out there is a header file there. And therefore, when we bring in util, we'll have to provide that star as well. But notice that util has a dependency on hardware abstraction layer, which means that when we create a library out of util, it will depend on things which are in HAL. 
And once you have HAL, then it'll pull in stuff because HAL depends on driver. It'll pull in driver. And once you pull in driver, it'll pull in the scheduler. And if you hadn't removed those dependencies, we'd have pulled in com as well. And that's the hard, that's the, that's what makes reusing code so difficult. So in this particular case, if I were to eliminate that dependency, and by the way, eliminate this dependency as well, because that creates an indirect dependency of util on HAL, because util depends on star, which then depends on HAL. If we got rid of those dependencies, I would then be able to extract util as a separate library and be able to share it. And these are just two examples. Uh, perhaps you have a large application where you want to split it up into many different um, microservices or separate applications. Uh, perhaps uh, you have a library that you want to remove and bring in a newer version of the library or, a, or replace that technology with a more modern technology. Uh, Latix will allow you to figure out the exact dependencies. Latix will then allow you to create a work list Notice that we just created a work list of hidden dependencies, uh, but you can actually create your modules within Latix. They will get it added into a work list. So if you have a large scale refactoring job in front of you where you need to actually take an application, uh, which has become hard to maintain or which you want to split it apart, you can actually, without writing a line of code, you can actually create a work list, a comprehensive work list, which tells you what you really need to do to arrive at that desired architecture. Uh, for and in fact, if you want to, if this interests you, if this piques your interest, go to our refactoring page. There is a webinar where which describes in detail many of these techniques. There's also a case study there from L. L. Bean, which shows how a large-scale application was then refactored using Latex.